Everyone wants a healthy woodland or forest, but what exactly does that mean? In general, the idea of forest health looks at the ecological conditions of forests and woodlands, taking into account a wide range of factors, including age, growth, diversity, insect pests, diseases, invasive plants, wildlife attributes, aesthetics, and resilience to disturbance. These are then weighed against particular land management goals. What constitutes a healthy forest can vary widely and depend on where you are, what you have, and what you want. But there are a few common characteristics of healthy and unhealthy woodlands in our area that can be a useful guide. Full canopies, good stand structure with a mix of different tree age, size class, vigorous native plant communities, and the potential for regeneration of desirable trees are common characteristics of healthy, vibrant woodlands. While some tree death is normal and unavoidable in woodlands, other threats can jeopardize stands and forestry operations. Let's walk through a few of the most serious threats to forest health in Kentucky. From leaf spots to caterpillars, native diseases and insects are common, but typically not a major problem for the health of your trees. They pop up each year and can sometimes cause widespread damage that looks concerning. For example, some years, outbreaks of yellow poplar weevil and yellow poplar trees will cause trees to look brown and look like they're dying, but those trees typically recover just fine. Invasive insects and diseases, on the other hand, can be big problems because they can kill healthy trees and virtually eliminate some species from our systems. The term invasive means that they're native to some other part of the world, and after coming here, they can cause big negative impacts. Perhaps the clearest example of a forest health threat that's invasive is the emerald ash borer. The larvae of this beetle tunnel under the bark of ash trees and kill trees by cutting off their circulation. The emerald ash borer was first detected in Kentucky in 2009. Since that time, it's swept through much of the state and is currently moving into the western parts of the state. It has killed millions of ash trees during this time. In addition to the emerald ash borer, the hemlock woolly adelgid is another serious and invasive threat in our state, killing hemlocks in the eastern part of Kentucky. Historically, invasive diseases like chestnut blight and Dutch elm disease have fundamentally changed our forests. Prior to the arrival of chestnut blight, which is an invasive fungus, American chestnut made up one out of every four trees in the southern Appalachians. It was a huge species from a wildlife perspective, um, those nuts that it produced, from a timber perspective, producing straight and rot resistant wood, and for people who ate those nuts as well. After the arrival of the blight, however, it virtually eliminated that species in our woods. You can still find a few sprouts here and there that have popped up. Um, those are sprouting up from the root systems of those trees that have been killed by the blight. And unfortunately, we've seen very little resistance uh, naturally present in our woods. Similarly, the loss of American elm trees due to Dutch elm disease was huge. This impact tended to be larger in cities where elm was extensively planted as a street tree, and of course, ash was planted to replace it, which has now been killed off by the emerald ash borer. What can we do about invasive insects and diseases? It depends on the threat as well as your situation, but in general, diversity gives us the biggest buffer when it comes to the threat posed by new invasive insects and diseases. The best way to protect your woodlands is promoting diversity. While we can't predict the next thing that's gonna come in and hurt our trees, um, diversity maximizes the odds that only a limited number of trees will be impacted. While individual trees can be protected from particular threats, like insecticide treatments for emerald ash borer, this typically isn't an option for most woodland owners who might have more area that they can reasonably do with that. However, there are still management options that you can take that will promote the health of your trees and improve the ability of your woods to recover from these threats as they come in. In addition, the movement of contaminated firewood is a key way that a lot of these threats are moved around on the landscape. You want to keep in mind always buy local, burn local, and not transport untreated firewood very far. Even if it looks fine to you, it could be harboring tiny little insects or fungi that could spread to other trees and kill them. If you notice unusual tree death and decline, make sure to let your county agent or your KDF forester know. 
there are always new invasive species arriving. For example, a couple summers ago, we first detected laurel wilt disease in Kentucky, which kills spicebush and sassafras trees. There are things out there in the world that could kill oak trees, could kill maple trees, and we don't want those to spread. So if you see something, make sure to say something, and hopefully we can stop that problem before it spreads. Invasive plants are another major forest health threat. Unlike insects and diseases, which can hurt trees outright, those invasive plant species are going to be out competing those native plants, as well as reducing regeneration and potential diversity over time. They can also seriously get in the way of your management if you're relying on natural regeneration, and instead of getting the native species you want to see, you have a sea of invasive plants. While this sounds minor over time, it can have a big impact and completely change the nature of forests and woodlands. Invasive plants can come in all shapes and sizes, from invasive trees like calorie pear, princess tree, and tree of heaven, to shrubs like bush honeysuckle, autumn olive, and burning bush, to grasses and smaller plants like miscanthus, microstegium, and garlic mustard, to vines like kudzu, Japanese honeysuckle, and winter creeper. Managing invasive plants depends on the plant you're dealing with and different invasive plants are most problematic in different areas. It's important to first identify the problem so that you can figure out how to best tackle it. There are different resources available to help you as well as cost share options through NRCS for landowners who are managing invasive plants. Many times this involves a mix of mechanical control, chemical control, and other integrated pest management options for invasive plants. So it's important to always do your research and always follow the label if you're using herbicides. Invasive plant management is not a once and done activity. New invasives are gonna to continue to sprout up either from roots or carried in by birds. And the earlier you can catch those and eradicate those, the less work it'll be. In addition, you always wanna keep an eye out for new invasives that might arrive to your area. Not yet here, but likely to come in the future and cause a big problem. Because if you can catch those early, um, it's much easier to deal with them than if you're playing catch up already after they've already established broadly. For example, in Kentucky, we have species like Japanese chatflower, lesser celandine, and many more that if you can learn to recognize, you could stop them before they become a problem. There are many other factors that can negatively affect the health of our forests and woodlands. From extreme weather events like drought, tornadoes and ice storm, to wildfires, to a legacy of past management, maybe poor management, that has left your trees and woods in bad conditions. In addition, minor stresses can really add up over time and stress trees out, make them more susceptible to other issues in the future. While poor management can really decrease the health of your woods, effective management can improve the resilience and vigor of your trees and improve the health of your woods overall. If you'd like to learn more about woodland health, there are lots of great resources for you out there. In particular, I'd recommend you check out the new Healthy Woods app. It will walk you through assessing the health of your woods, um, the different characteristics you should be looking for, and also connect you to resources for next steps in your management. It's free and available for smartphones. Thanks for joining me today and learning a little bit more about woodland health. If you'd like to learn more, make sure to check us out online and follow us on social media.